que... Um, welcome back, uh, everyone. We'll uh, continue with our, um, our study here about the steps of Abraham. And we were saying that um, Abraham, the first important thing that we learned from his life is that he believed God. And then secondly, um, we just started talking about how he had hope uh, when there was so much of hopelessness. And I was just starting to tell you that when we journey with God, Sometimes it feels like this. It's not easy uh, throughout the journey. In the initial stages, we may feel that we are full of energy and uh, that we can trust God. But when the going gets uh, tough, that's the time when um, there is that temptation to give up against all odds. You know, uh, the scripture tells us that he believed. So I'm just going to read verse 18 of Romans 4. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So contrary to hope means hopelessness. Okay, Hopelessness as in there's nothing to look forward to. And uh, circumstances seem like the promise that God has spoken will never be fulfilled. So there can be a sense of hopelessness. right? We feel um, that uh, uh, no matter what we do, we can't make it happen, what God wants, uh, what God has once spoken to us. But what is it that we learn from Abraham, the second step? Contrary to hope, in hope believed. Okay, we saw in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith is now. Now faith is. Isn't it? So faith is now. But hope is in the future. Isn't it? Things that we hope for. Those things that we hope for um, are in the future. What is hope? Hope is an expectation where uh, we are... We have a desire. Yes, God, this is going to happen. Now, I'm going to walk in what you have spoken. Uh, you are going to, um, you know, uh, make certain things take place in the future. So there is an expectation. But what is hopelessness? Not having hope is like saying nothing will happen. Nothing can happen. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in that place when we think of God's promise. Because it's too big. That's how God speaks to us. Usually, when God gives us a promise, it will be bigger than what we can handle. Are you understanding? Because if it is just something that we can handle, then where is the faith? Where is the hope? Right. But when God speaks to all of us, like Abraham, a man who does not have even one child, what is God saying? Multitudes are going to be your descendants. So it's big. Maybe a sense of hopelessness hit him at some point where he was feeling, how can it happen? I don't know how this can happen. right? So even in our life circumstances, somewhere we get into that mode where it is so difficult to hope and have the expectation from God. Okay, Hope is nothing but an active expectation where, uh, you know, uh, little children, when you see them uh, and if their birthday is coming, they'll tell the whole world, please come to my house. This day, it's my birthday. Why? Because they're so happy. They're waiting. They're expecting. They're desiring. It's going to be my birthday. I'll wear a new dress. I'll give chocolates to my friends. So, but hopelessness is like, have you ever seen a little child who's not happy about their birthday? No. If that child is not happy about their birthday, something must be seriously wrong because they've lost all hope. Expectation is not there. Okay, we may need to counsel the child. But normal, what is normal? There's a sense of joy, desire, expectation. And when we are believing in God, we need to have hope. Expectation has to be there inside us. Somewhere inside, 
we feel like yeah god will do it it'll happen it's coming right even though circumstances are opposite from inside what do we have hope so what does faith do faith will pull the hope because there is faith there will be hope do you understand are you understanding what i'm trying to say there'll be a sense of expectation or um a desire where from inside we have some joy right that god will do okay right now i can't see anything but god will do and that is what we learn about abraham against all hope in hope he believed he had expectation in his heart nobody could take away that expectation from him that god will do it okay so abraham because of his faith he also uh, you know he he pulled on the hope and there was hope in his heart when circumstances were challenging in the beginning and this is true for all of us when we journey with god um when we start off this might happen where uh, the initial enthusiasm little bit starts to come down then we find ourselves in a little bit of hopelessness but if we are still carrying faith what will faith do faith will pull the hope inside then like those little children we'll also be expecting hey it's okay even though things are tough i know god will do god will do god will help me right so expectation and hope is uh necessary right when we trust in god now moving on to the third step so what did we say initially there's faith and then as we journey with god there could be a sense of hopelessness but when we have faith hope, hope will come then third one is that abraham he did not become weak in faith verse 19 it says and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was almost 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb so what are some things that make us weak in our faith by your, from your experience what are some things that make us weak in our faith hmm? unbelief okay unbelief but how does it come yeah when the when the situation is difficult then um, you know slowly that weakness can affect us uh, what else anything else which will make us weak in our faith correct so when we see our situation from our side it it feels very difficult for example if you take the israelites they are standing in front of the red sea okay imagine if they didn't have faith in god if moses didn't have faith in god don't tell me how can the sea part it's not possible so looking at situations and circumstances with our own mindset it discourages us because there is no uh, hope if we are going to do it only from our limited thinking isn't it uh, so we may look at our circumstances as brother said and uh, think yeah god is telling me that uh, okay for example you know god is calling you to be a pastor you look at your own self and you say uh, no but i don't know how to speak like how moses he said right i don't know how to speak i am stammering uh, how will the people accept me um, we have so many questions why because we are looking at it from our perspective but when we look at it from god's perspective our faith will be strengthened so looking from our perspective can also make us weak in our faith that's correct okay unbelief then uh, um, our own perspective what else anything else can make us weak weaken our faith how about what people say 
sometimes if there uh, are uh, comments which are opposite to the promise of god it may affect us if we let it affect us people may say uh, okay let's take for example gideon uh, he did not think that he was strong enough to win a battle and uh, maybe people would have told him you can't do it gideon god will you know choose somebody else you're not the right person so when this happens somewhere we accept what people are saying and uh, we reject what god is saying god is saying you can but what if the people say you can't what if we go by what people are saying even then our faith can be weakened sometimes we can look at the circumstances right um circumstances are as i told told us if the red sea is in front of you what are the facts the facts are that yeah there is water you have all these physics laws right so uh, you need to you need to build a big boat that is the right way because there are all these principles where um, uh, you can only float on the water you can't walk through a sea there is no such physics principle if that was the case you wouldn't need airplanes right today we'll all be walking across oceans and go to whichever country we want to go because that's how the the laws of physics are however that's the, the facts are different so when you look at the facts even then our faith can get challenged so maybe you know when we are sick and the reports say uh, this is wrong with you that is wrong with you uh, you can't this can't be cured that can't be cured the facts are there in front of us somewhere those things start to affect us isn't it uh, but look at abraham <laughs> he did not deny the facts it was a reality in verse 19 we read that his body was already dead it says dead to do what dead to basically um, be able to multiply right uh, to procreate and so uh, his body was already dead since he was about 100 years old that was the reality and the deadness of sarah's womb that is the reality but in the midst of that reality all the reports were there with abraham sarah but they did not let that weaken their faith so don't let the facts weaken your faith okay that is also something we learn from abraham so if we don't want to don't want our faith to be weakened how to keep faith strong how to keep faith strong we talked about different things that can make the faith weak now how to keep it strong pray okay what else can we do how to how to refresh our faith this to hope against all hopes yeah so hope against all hope um fine so you make you take the initiative to to hope is what you're saying okay that's fine so uh, my question now sister is how to strengthen um your faith how to strengthen one's faith that's the question okay uh, paramita says read the word of god then uh, blessy says remembering the remembering god's promises lucy says having a relationship with god okay great um what else can we do focus on okay focus on god don't don't focus on other things focus on god uh what are some practical things that we can do to focus on god declare the promises of god okay correct so we can declare the promises of god so some practical things can be as uh, um you know nelson said focus on god don't focus on the facts facts are there we are not denying the facts they do exist but we are focusing or we are sort of zooming in on what god says and for that what we have to do is um you know spend time with god 
prayer is one thing and uh, as sister gertrude just now pointed out you declare the promises of god so what can we do we can list out all the scriptures that uh, let's say if it is sickness there are so many scriptures that talk about healing and the fact that god is a healer so what can i do i can pull out all those scriptures and i can start to declare them i can start to read them often so i don't know how many of you have heard this testimony but it always inspires me um there is um you know a a, a particular um uh, woman of god who was diagnosed with uh, final stage liver cancer okay and this was way back way back uh, in uh, i don't even know which year it was but uh, she was around um, she was around in her 40s and now she is uh, you know in her 80s i think okay so 40 years ago so you can imagine 40 years ago when people were diagnosed with um, you know a serious condition they wouldn't have had the medical help the kind that we have today so the doctors told her you won't survive uh, you have a very serious issue it's uh, stage 3 uh, or something stage 4 liver cancer you have only a few days to live so at that point she was very disappointed because she uh, like as a family they believed in god's healing power and so uh, they um, immediately started praying and asking god to heal but one thing that god showed her was to take the bible verses and to start making declaration so uh, they told the doctor that uh, okay i will i will get admitted just give me some time so she went back home because anyway there was no treatment those days uh, so she went back home and she wrote out all these um, scriptures and she talks about how it was very difficult because she was having all the symptoms like you know she's vomiting blood and having uh, pain and not able to sleep and not able to work so facts are there but what does god's word say what has god promised god had promised her i will heal you so she wrote down all the verses and she started declaring them okay and uh, how often did she declare them so she shares in her testimony that you know how we take tablets when we go to the doctor the doctor tells us take one in the morning one in the afternoon one at night so she told god god your word is my medicine i don't have any other medicine the doctors are saying they cannot help me your word is my medicine i'm going to take the word every day so she wrote it down on paper and every day in the morning when she woke up she went through all the scriptures one round then again in the afternoon you know around lunch time she went through all the scriptures again declaring them you know over herself uh, and uh, similarly in the night before she goes to bed again take that paper declare all the verses regarding healing so she kept doing it and as i told you she's still alive she's still alive she's 80 plus uh, years old and she talks about this testimony of recovering from you know the final stage of liver cancer 40 years ago and every time she goes for a blood checkup now apparently the uh the lab people say that hey whose report is this everything is perfect with this report okay obviously uh it's not just her faith but also it depends on so many things managing your health well and all that uh, as well which we don't want to neglect but the point that i'm trying to make is see circumstances can be there but we have to learn to focus on who god is what god says so uh prayer focusing on the word declaring the word right these are all ways in which we can build our faith when our faith is strong no matter how the circumstances look um it shouldn't shake us you know after a while we are quite strong that's what happened to abraham he made his faith very strong even though he knew the facts he didn't let those facts shake him same thing uh, should apply to us in the beginning abraham believed second his faith was so strong that in the challenges he still had hope that god will do third is that uh, he did not become weak but kept his faith faith very very strong and that is our responsibility we have to take care of our faith we don't let anyone rob your faith or uh, in other words don't let anything rob your faith 
pay attention to the word of God. In Proverbs 4, verses 20 to 22, we see there, uh, you know, um, uh, scriptures tell us that pay attention to the word of God. Keep the word in the midst of your heart. So when the word is inside my heart, no matter how the situation is, I can still be very strong and keep moving forward with God. So that is the third step of Abraham. He was strong uh, and not destroyed by the facts. Now moving on to um, uh, the fourth step here. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So verse 20 says that he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. See, when we are journeying strong with God, we'll come to a place in our faith where uh, we're already convinced sort of, you know, we're, we're already strong. So whether it is fear, whether it is worry, whether it is doubt, whether it is confusion, whether it is, you know, the words that other people are saying or the, the reports that we get, we've come to a place where we no longer shake. You know, sometimes you see um, some trees in the wind, what happens? Some trees which are um, not so strong. When the wind blows, they'll also move, isn't it? They shake. But you find some trees, they are so strong, so firm, that even if there's a strong wind, the tree never moves. Some leaves here and there may shake. But the point is that when we journey with God and strengthen our faith, our faith becomes so strong that winds can come, waves can come, right? All kinds of things can come, but our faith is so strong at this point that it doesn't matter. What somebody says doesn't matter. You know, the fear that seems to be trying to tempt us doesn't matter anymore. You're already strong. But we have to come to that place as far as our faith is concerned. We can't just remain in that old place where we first started. Okay? So strengthening yourself. Look at Abraham. He just strengthened himself. He was not wavering. Okay. At one point, he was firm. And that happens when we are journeying forward with God. It can't happen, you know, like uh, just like that. You have to journey with God and strengthen yourself in the Lord. And so you come to this place where, um, you know, you're so strong. But even at that point, we uh, have to guard our hearts against unbelief. You know, this is the, uh, this is the reality of the Christian life. We can keep getting stronger and stronger in God. Right? As believers, um, we are definitely stronger than the day that we started journeying with God. However, no matter how strong you become, maybe, you know, you're, you're uh, many years, many decades, you're a believer, you're a strong believer, and so many miracles have happened, signs, wonders have happened, you have thousands of churches, thousands of people. You know what? Even then, one has to guard their faith. We can't play around with the faith that God gives us. No matter how strong we are in God, we have to guard our faith and continue to, to build ourselves up in faith. At that point, we can't say, I'm already so strong. You know, I've already done so much ministry. It's okay. What can happen? Nothing can happen. But you see, that's what Satan is waiting for. The moment we say, I'm already strong, nothing can happen. That's the time when he's very happy. He says, okay, now this person has let their guard down. Now I can tempt them. Now I can cause them to fall. So there is never a moment, no matter how strong we become in our faith, where we say, uh, it's done. And I don't have to guard my faith anymore. That's a lie. Even when we are strong in our faith, yes, unbelief doesn't affect us anymore. Worry doesn't affect us anymore. But I still have to protect my faith. I cannot play around with, uh, with um, the lies of the devil. you know, Or even in my mind, entertain. What does Paul say? Paul teaches us, take every thought captive. One thought, one doubt, one uh, un, you know, unbelief in our mind. That's enough. That's all Satan wants. So take every thought captive and pull it down. 
Okay. So uh, this is this is uh, really crucial for us that we should come to a place where we are strong in God, but at the same time. Just because we're in a place where we are strong in God, don't let your guard down. Okay? Uh, instead, all the more, work on your faith and continue to keep the faith strong. I'll come to the questions. There are lots of questions in the chat. Uh, I just thought that I'll, I'll go ahead and finish what we have for us right now. Okay, moving on. So uh, Abraham, he did not waver at the promise of God. Then what else? The next is he, strength, he was strengthened in the faith, giving glory to God. So we've talked about this when we said about the kind of prayer, right? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is also in the category of prayer. So sometimes when we are waiting upon the Lord, we can thank God before we receive the promise and say, uh, you know, God, uh, I want to honor you. Because you have already blessed me. I know you have already done it. Remember the way Jesus prayed before he raised Lazarus from the dead? He said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. So Jesus was giving thanks before the miracle. And that is also something we see in Abraham's life. So Abraham, he had such strong faith in God. He kept his hope alive. Uh, he uh, did not become weak by the facts. He did not waver at the promises of God. And also, he strengthened himself in the faith by giving glory to God. So giving thanks to God, giving praises to God uh, before the miracle happens. That is also something that we learn in Abraham's life. So uh, in my personal journey, I feel like the step five of giving thanks to God, it takes a little bit of time to get here. So in the beginning itself, we want to say thank you, God, uh, for um, uh, the promise. It's already happened. But we may be battling at that time to be convinced. We may be battling at that time to uh, be so strong in our faith. But initially, when you journey properly with God, then we can come to that place where in our hearts, it's a settled matter. Okay. And see, it's not about convincing anyone else. But this happens inside our heart. And maybe we won't be able to explain it to others. But we can rejoice in the fact that it's already happened. We can't convince others. But in our heart, we know. In our spirit, we know that we have prayed for so long. We have uh, built our faith for so long. And God has actually done it. It's just a matter of time before we can actually, see, before others can see it. And so at that point, what happens? We start thanking God. We start praising God. We start glorifying God. Because in our hearts, we are sure that God has done it. Right? So this is what it is. This is also, when we are seeing the journey of Abraham, it's like praying a believing prayer. Remember? We talked about all these things where you have to keep moving forward with your faith. And you come to a place where you... As you know, people say that you know that you know that you know that God has done it and it is going to uh, be fulfilled. So Abraham was giving glory to God. And the sixth step here is when Abraham is fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. So he came to a place where nothing could take away his faith anymore fully convinced that's where we should reach as far as our faith is concerned so when god speaks his truth to us that's the starting point but we need to journey till we come to that last station what is that fully convinced no doubt no worry no confusion i know that's what God is going to do. Being fully convinced. That's a very powerful place to be. So these are the steps of Abraham. Abraham was not perfect. That is why at a time when um, there was no hope, right? he still had to really work on his faith to 
keep hope alive. Like any other human being, same thing happens to us. It's not like we are perfect. In the beginning, we believe. Yes, we believe. But uh, we also go through ups and downs, right? But we have to come to that place where we are. Um, we don't waver at the faith. We give thanks to God. And finally, we are fully convinced. If this is what God said, God will do it. And uh, that's the place where we have to reach in our faith. But you see, it's going to take some hard work, right? We can't just say, OK, I have faith. Now faith will grow in my heart. And um, you know, faith will just uh, be there. It will become strong. No, we've got to work on the faith. If we don't work on the faith, remember we earlier said faith is what? It's like a muscle. So if I don't work the muscle, it can't become strong because the only way the muscle can become strong is you have to put it to work. The same way, I have to strengthen my faith. And it's my responsibility to strengthen my faith, come to a place where I am fully convinced. So Abraham journeyed with God in this way. And we see that Abraham lived the promise of God. He was not, um, you know, he was not dis uh, discouraged because of his body or, you know, his wife's body, it says uh, in the book of Hebrews, that he understood that both of them were in a so-called dead situation. But in that dead situation, he still believed God. And God was able to work a miracle. And that is why we um, really look up to Abraham. Um, and some additional thoughts here is faith is, as I told us earlier, faith is not just about um, having faith in our hearts, but we have to put it into action. So James writes about it. And in the life of Abraham, that is also something that we observe. You know, what did Abraham do? Abraham, he believed God. That in itself was counted as righteousness to him. And then uh, whatever God called him to do, he stepped out, right? So here uh, you have James chapter 2, verses 20 to 26, uh, that teaches us about faith, which must have works alongside. Faith without works is dead. So in the life of Abraham, tell me what are all the works that he did. He believed God, but when God told him, come out of your own people, he did it. Imagine if Abraham said, I have faith in God, I'll just be where I am. But where is your faith? If you have faith, you've got to do something, right? What did God tell you? Come out of your own people. And because he had faith, there was some action. He came out. Then what else? God told him, um, um, you will have a son, right? So he journeyed with God. He believed God. And then he finally had Isaac. Then when God said, OK, Abraham, I want you to go sacrifice Isaac. Abraham has faith in God that God can even raise the dead. But did Abraham do anything when God told him, go sacrifice your son? Or was he at home? Yeah, so in Genesis 22, it says early in the morning, he rose up and he kept, you know, all the, they would have had certain uh, uh, things required to make the sacrifice. So he, he, what he did is he worked out his faith. Okay? Uh, he put action to his faith. Just think with me. Let's say um, you are interested in something. For example, if I tell you, Okay, there's this um, uh, uh, cricket match. Okay, in in some place, let's just give it a name. Um, some place, Bombay or something. And uh, uh, there is a free ticket. Okay, and you've won the free ticket, and you can go tomorrow to Bombay to watch the cricket match. But the flight is at 3 a.m. Would you go? What would you do to get the flight? What would you do to get the flight? What do we all do? Yeah, get up early. Get up early is one thing, but would you have packed your bags the previous night? Yeah, 
you pack your bag, everything ready. So, okay, fine, you wake up so early, then maybe the airport is one hour away. We make all the effort, enthusiastic, so enthusiastic, that we can go and we can watch the match. But think about Abraham that day. What did God tell him? Your son will be sacrificed. Do you think he was enthusiastic about it? But you know what the Bible says? He woke up in the early in the morning. He took everything which was needed, which means he was still enthusiastic. He had to pack. He had to organize himself. He had to wake up early in the morning. For what? To sacrifice the son. But the point I'm trying to make is he had so much faith in God that he thought, God is telling me to do, he must have a good reason why. But I am sure that even if my son dies, he'll come back to life. So let's see what God does. He was excited about what God is going to do. And so he displayed a great enthusiasm. Right? So that is the journey of Abraham. He put actions to his faith. He did not simply say, yeah, I know God can save Isaac. I'll sit at home. I'll sleep. We'll see tomorrow. No, there was always some action along with the faith. So same way, what is God telling us to do today? If God is saying, um, you know, uh, that you're going to be a teacher of the word, what should I do? Okay, let's say somebody got this promise. You're going to be a teacher of the word. Preach. Straight away go and preach. Huh? huh? Prepare yourself. Correct. Okay. So, see, all I'm saying is when God gives us a promise, there is an action, a corresponding action from our side. We, we need to do something as well to walk in that promise. So if the promise of God says that, you know, I'm going to be a teacher of the word, then I might as well put in a lot of time to study the word to study it in a proper way, to learn it, to memorize it, to declare it, to pray it, right? Uh, maybe even write sermons. I've heard so many pastors say that before their ministry started, they wrote so many sermons. So sometimes they take sermons out of what they had written long ago and they preach now. But it's not like they wrote the sermon for the service. No, that sermon would have been written 20 years ago when they waited in the presence of God and God gave them a word. Right? So the point is, yes, there is a promise of God. Yes, I have faith. But what am I doing with that faith? I got to do something. I can't just keep saying, yeah, God has said, God has said. Yeah, but what, are, what am I doing? What are we doing? How are we preparing ourselves? How are we equipping ourselves? What are our plans? Show me your plans. You got it? So faith is seen through action. People believe that Jesus could heal. What did they do? They went to Jesus. They didn't sit in their house. You would just find like, you know, one or two places where Jesus says, okay, I'll come to your house. But most of the other time, people were running after him, coming to the street. Okay, Jesus is walking on the street. You know, I better touch him. I better cry out to him. I got to do something. I have faith that he can heal me. But if I don't do, then how, how will I receive my healing? So imagine people who didn't do anything. Maybe Jesus is walking on the street, but there are people, they believe that Jesus can heal, but they're just sitting there. So sad. They might have missed their chance. Because faith will do something. Got it? So this is how, even in the journey of Abraham, Abraham obeyed God. We see obedience as the, uh, the characteristic of Abraham mentioned many places. He heard from God. He had faith in God. But how did he put his faith to work? He was obedient. He did what God was calling him to do. Okay, so that is a lesson for us. So we'll come back to um, other things here, but I'll quickly look at the questions in our chat.
Okay, I'll go back to the question during the break. I think Daniel Oliver uh, asked, before Abraham had the promise uh, son Isaac, what evidence did Abraham have that he believed God so deeply? Can you quote some things which made Abraham to build faith on God in the beginning? So, uh, uh, Daniel, I think we've discussed those things, right? All the things that helped him to build his faith, the kind of focus he kept, the way he obeyed God, the way he uh, saw the facts, but he, he did not waver at the promise of God, how he thanked God. All these things helped him to really build his faith. Now, uh, one more thing that you're asking here is, what evidence did Abraham have? What evidence? Okay, okay, good question. So uh, Hebrews 11, 1, that's what it says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So look at it like this. Okay, today I want us to understand. For us as believers, evidence is first inside. Then evidence will be outside. Got it? So what evidence did Abraham have? Faith. It was already inside him. That's what we are saying. He was not wavered at the promises, wavering at the promises of God, he was strengthened, giving glory to God. What is all this? Something is there inside Abraham. Hope against all hope. Abraham hoped in God. Abraham believed in God. Evidence is sitting inside. So for all of us as believers, we have to ask the question, whatever vision God has given me for my life, am I carrying an evidence or the substance inside? Okay, so spiritually, I need to sense that yes, strongly on the inside, I'm journeying to a place where I am convinced that God is going to do it. So once I come to that place inside of being convinced, that's when the evidence will manifest outside. That's what Hebrews 11 one says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So uh, what evidence did Abraham have? He had faith inside. How do we know he had? All the promises came to pass, no? It got fulfilled. It was inside first and it happened outside. Same thing with all of us. When we are journeying with God, check faith. Do I really carry faith in my heart? Do I have the substance inside? If we have it inside, then it will uh, take place outside. But if inside my faith is weak, my faith is shaking, right? my faith is affected by uh, worry, doubt, unbelief, fear, all these things, I'm not convinced. When I am not convinced, how can I expect something to happen, promise of God to take place? No, I can't. So I have to journey like Abraham till I come to a place where within me, I am convinced. That is the evidence. So question is, are you convinced that God will do what he has promised? If not yet convinced, then better journey with God. Strengthen your faith till we come to a place where, like Abraham, the last step or the last station where we are fully convinced. Yes, he will do it. I'm sure he'll do it. And just keep putting actions to the faith. Okay, uh, um, Daniel, I hope that helps you. Now let's moving on. Um, questions. Okay, not really all of them are comments. So that's fine. Uh, we can wrap up here uh, unless you have anything to ask. Okay, so Sanjay says uh, it's a supernatural hour 12 to 1. Open for online students via the main Audi page. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so it is open, uh, Sanjay. You can connect. There'll be a link posted. Uh, so you just connect using that link. It will start at 12 noon. 
Okay, great. All right, so if there are no more questions, we'll just wrap up with a word of prayer. Uh, Nelson, you'll pray? Yeah. One second, there's a question here. Um, how to check our attendance percentage? OK, on Google Classroom, I think we'll have to uh, take help from our IT. So um, we will be able to check. I, I don't. I don't think that the students will be able to check. But uh, I request us to those who are attending online, uh, please make sure that you don't miss classes. And when you log into your classes, um, please uh, ensure that you stay for the entire class. Uh, if you are an online student, for those who are on campus, their attendance is different. But the people here online. Uh, that is my uh, advice to you and uh, our team like the it will be able to check your attendance and uh, assignments yes i know i told i mentioned last week that it will be up last week but it was a little tight for me so i'm hoping to have it up today so today it will be up for uh, both your subjects faith as well as uh, prayer and then you'll have uh, sufficient time to complete it okay great and in, any other questions so you need a minimum of 85% attendance. If it goes anywhere less than that, we won't be able to help you. So you got to help yourself. Okay. Make sure that you um, attend all the classes. Don't miss even one class. OK, let's close. Uh, Nelson, please pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this day. As we today study about Abraham and his faith, Lord, in his troubled time, he kept faith upon you. He strengthened himself with faith, and Lord, uh, you helped him in his uh, while he was in his journey. So, Lord, we ask you for that faith he had in our life too. So, we have, as we have been studying here, help us to get faith. While we are studying and in everything we do, we we'll, we do what we will do with faith, O oh Lord. And Lord, we studied everything. Help us remember for uh, future days, Lord, so we can study well and we'll be doing good in study also. In this, in, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. Amen. 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 And thank you, thank you, Nelson. Thank you, everyone. Um, God bless you. Have a good day. Okay, so I'll see you all in the same uh, subject next week. Thank you. Bye for now.